Hello, everyone, and welcome back to News Now from the Belmont Journal, and welcome back, Franklin Tucker, editor of the Belmontonian, and I'm your host, Mike Crowley. So, Franklin, a number of items in the news this week. Let's start with who's on the ballot <laughs> That's for right. April. Who's on the ballot for the uh, upcoming annual election in uh, April 4th? And, uh, well, we uh, just have basically uh, uh, one competitive race in town-wide, um, uh, uh, for town-wide office, and that's the school committee. And that's because three people are running for two slots on that committee. That's right. And those three people are... Um, do you want me to say their names, Franklin? Yeah, why don't you All do right, that? So, since, you, since you know those people at the school committee. Um, Amy Zuccarello, mm -hmm. uh, Jung Yue, and Rachel Watson. Yep, three uh, three new uh, candidates, but uh, two of them, um, uh, Zuccarello and uh, um, uh, Yue, have uh, have uh, already had interest in uh, coming to the school committee. They were... Uh, uh, they, they, they were they, some of the candidates who were on uh, to fill um, a, a position back a year and a half ago. Uh, they were they asked they, they were part of the, the candidates of those. Uh, that's that's right. So so, so th these are people who are really interesting. You know, some uh, just a, a, a lot of interesting uh, people uh, looking to get on. Uh, these are again two seats of three. Um, and uh, so, and not surprisingly, uh, you know, they they. It always is when some of the new candidates, and most of them aren't members of the town meeting. And uh, two of them, uh, Rachel Watson and, and UA, are running <laughs> to, get on, to get on town meeting. and uh, As well as school committee. As well as school committee. So they're going to have two uh, separate uh, uh, ballots. And it's, it's probably worth mentioning that, that um, Rachel Watson is chair of CPAC. That's that right. So, is... so everybody has a real interest, you know. So this is not. So this is something that people have been thinking about or have been involved with for a long time. So yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's going to be an interesting race. What we do, what, what we don't have, are the three other uh, things we should talk about on Tom White is that um, Stephen Fiore is, is going to return to the uh, the health board. Um, he was defeated in the last election, and uh, he's. He's come back, and he's the only person running for uh, Don David's seat, okay. who are a very long time and, and, and a really great uh, person who we had on the uh, health um, uh, the health board. Uh, she was a former chairman for a long time, and um, and uh, on the select board, we're going to have a first woman in about nineteen years, and that is Elizabeth Dion. Has it been that long, Franklin? It has. When Anne Marie Mahoney uh, left the board to uh, uh, take a graduate degree. So um, let me just say that that's embarrassing. <laughs> it is kind of embarrassing. Not that women haven't run before, but uh, she's the only one who uh, she pretty much, uh, as, as I think we stated before, she cleared the field. You know, when she when she uh, did it early, she had been uh, she had been talking to people all around town and getting support. So I think you know most people saw her as just um, uh, she's just had the. Um, expertise and and she's been around town government um she served on a number of committees warren committee she's on the warren committee she's she's ahead of the uh, uh, uh community preservation co uh, committee so she's somebody who's um well versed in town government so she'll be a great uh, person to put uh, to go in here i think she's also um even we've we've had a large um uh latter-day saint population in this town i think i believe she might be the very first person from the latter-day saints to become a select board member which is um kind of surprising all right um how about the other races franklin well uh what we have is uh we have two ballot questions of course one is for the rink the 30 the, basically a 30 million dollar debt exclusion that's the second time it's coming up in november at, uh it um, it was defeated by about 300 votes, uh, two percentage votes, uh, 51 to 49 percent. Um, I think right now we're, we've uh, seen one uh, in this last season, and it will be the last season of the ring. Um, that it's so difficult, uh, it's just falling apart. It really is literally just dilapidated and falling apart. And um, so now people will see that uh, through this year, you could just tell that um, yeah, I think their hope, uh, the supporters, the campaigners for the new rank are hoping that people will have seen the trouble and how much expense we've got, we had to put into just keeping the rank uh, viable. Uh, that will change people's uh, <coughs> votes. Uh, second one, and I think we should go back and just talk about uh, town-wide government, 
Yeah. No one took out ballots for uh, uh, town treasurer. That's right. And there's there's a, a question on the ballot that could change the elected town treasurer, for which no one is running, That's right. uh, to an appointed position. That's right. And uh, hopefully that will uh, pass, because if it doesn't, the person who wins, <laughs> gets the most write-in votes will be uh, effectively the the, uh, the, um, the, uh, the treasurer for the next three years. So um, it's, it's uh, I think, I think by the, by just the, um, just the knowledge that somebody didn't even did, that no one even took out papers for the treasurer means that I think people are thinking it's, it's, it's going to it's going to pass the appointed rather than the elected um, post. And frankly, let me ask, is it worth mentioning that we have um, had a campaign established in support of uh, the appointed treasurer position? Yeah, if, you know, I don't think it really, you know, I, I, th I don't think people are really I think if you talk to people in town, they're pretty much okay with with the appointed um, board. I think there are a number of people who have issues with uh, the current town uh, management, um, and um, whether it's the select board or the town administrator. But I think they're pretty small. Um, if they're really they're, they're, they haven't shown any real reason to go against not only this uh, this um, action. Uh, which was a, corner point, a, a, a cornerstone of um, the Collins report, something that uh, the town is enthusiastically taking up. Let me ask you really quickly about uh, town meeting. Um, in the past, we've sometimes had problems filling seats in our annual town election. Don't we have a full slate of candidates for every precinct? Well, we so there, there will be six competitive races. Okay. And, and, and surprisingly, you know, in precinct seven, where I'm from, it's usually, that's usually the, the precinct where you have a lot of people, where there's a lot of open uh, seats at the end of the night, and you, you're just counting, uh, you know, um, people who are throwing their names in um, at the last minute. Not this time. There's 20 people running for the 12 seats. It's a, wow. it's amazing you know, how many people are running. And we're having competitive races in, in all but two. I think it's four and five. And even uh, those have 12 seats. So, and, and I think the only one that will have um, a um, a write-in candidate will be five. I think there's 11 people running in in five. So um, it should be, uh, there'll be a long night, especially in seven <laughs> with all, all those people getting out uh, running. All right, Franklin, let's let's talk about the school budget. And, and for disclosure, I am a <laughs> member of the school committee for the next six weeks. <laughs> but Franklin, please. <laughs> uh, it's 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 uh, I think the best word is troubling. You know, we're yeah. seeing um, uh, new information that's coming for, you know, we've been talking ab uh, about the in the fiscal meetings uh, that we've had uh, lately about fiscal year uh, 24 now. But which in, is the, the next budget, which is yeah. the next budget starts in July. Yeah. And uh, but what's happening in this fiscal year and fiscal year 23 is just um, uh, surprising that, that it's come out like this. And, and what it is, is, is we're seeing just this explosion in, uh, in special education costs, and especially the out of district placements, which is, you know, sending kids to private schools to get them educated, and uh, which is mandated under state law. Right. Yeah. So this is not something that, that the town can just, you know, move, move to the side. So in the first quarter of this year, it, it seemed that <clears throat> this out of placement district was under the budget, which was which was about uh, about $150,000. Yeah, there, there was a projected deficit at year end for year end at the end of the first quarter. Now, it's, it's again, very difficult to project anything from the first quarter. But but but, you know, Spend things, costs are incredible. Things looked good. But and it looked now, good about, now we're, we're seeing about a $900,000 deficit. Uh, for for the end of the year that's the projection for the end of the year now like anything else it, it, as of june 30th if you have a deficit you have to you have to find some way to pay for it and right now what we're seeing is a, a pretty uh, you know an austerity budget or an austerity uh, programming at, at the school district where you know there's there's even an issue whether there'll be enough paper at the winbrook school you know and that's you know you can almost you know that's kind of you know humorous in some ways but it shouldn't be i mean right. if you can't supply paper to your schools you know you're in a you're in a very tight issue right there you know what they're what the school uh, department is thinking of doing is not hire you know if somebody leaves at the end of the year and we always have people or, or even leave, before the end of the year right before the end of the year 
you know, they have to give like notice and say, you know, right. I won't be here. They're not going to fill it. Yep. And that's the only way they can, they're thinking about how they can really, you know, find a way to close this almost $1 million gap that and, we saw. Yes, as well as clamping down on on, on supplies purchases, uh, uh, repair of Chromebooks. Everything, uh, everything you can think instructional, of. Uh, uh, instructional uh, uh a software subscription licenses. Mm -hmm. um, there are everything, everything under the sun is going to be considered, and 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 that's going to that's going to start hurting, and especially at the end of the year when you know you don't have this person who you know you would expect to be uh, you know employed by like, let's say the middle school or the high school. <clears throat> but you know the bad news just continues for 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 the schools because now we have to look at uh, fiscal year twenty four. So what we're hearing is that. Um, you know, the, the right now that in fiscal year 24, next uh, the next fiscal year that starts July 1st, that the schools will have to cut 1.2 million dollars um, uh, because it just we just don't have the money. Basically, well, we do have the money, but there's uh, a, a a portion of town government, uh, whether it's the select board or the Warren committee, and they're saying <clears throat> that. Um, we have to have a certain amount of money in reserves, free cash, right? For for in case. Uh, an override, which will be coming. It, it's not just that, Franklin. It's it's that you know, you know. So so, fisc reasonable fiscal managers would say that you need to keep some sort of account, a, a, a town reserve to handle any kind of fiscal and crisis. That, and that helps and, you also with your right. with your uh, credit ratings, yep. which is really important because we are coming out. Well, we're going for a, a, a big, you know, um, uh, thirty four million dollars. Um, uh, for the new library. So we'll, we'd like to have a AAA rating on that. So we do have to have those reserves. And there's a policy in town that says we should have an X percentage of money set away for free cash and, and not use. Even though we have $15 million in free cash, most of that's going to be spent this year. That's right. In order and to, uh, to and support the year 24. To, to support the um, both town and school departments. That's right. I mean, you have to realize that the school department, you know, not only are they, they're facing this sped um, increase, this uh, this was an extraordinary historic uh, increase in, in special education, but we're also opening a new school. And that's expensive. You know, whether you like it or not, you got to put people in there, you got to put furniture in there, you got to put, you know, so. All that free cash is now being used, and, and but what we're hearing is also, you know, you would think that two point one million dollars. Is there some way that 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 the schools can can be helped in in fiscal twenty four? Well, you know, right now what we're hearing from the state government, and which was confirmed by our state representatives, and you know, in in up on Beacon Hill, <clears throat> is that uh, uh, due to the Fair Share Act, which was a millionaire tax. That they were going to have a, a large surplus in the state uh, state budget, and uh, Maura Healy, who is our new uh, governor, has stated that you know uh, some of those some of that uh, surplus will be going to uh, Chapter 70, which is local aid. But what we have in town is uh, 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 people who are saying any money that's coming in from the state, anything that's coming in, whether we you know from, from any source outside whether it's federal, state, you know, government, you know, anything that we, we get, that money will not go to schools. We are not going to direct that money to schools. We're going to direct it to that, to the free cash fund. Right. Well, so frankly, I just want to say that, you know, that's not a decision, but but that that does reflect the sentiments of some of the folks on the select board, as well as the Warren Committee. And the Warren Committee is, of course, the uh, fiscal watchdog for the town. Right. And, you know, and there, there's, uh, you know, and what you're basically what they're basically saying is that we have to show the town voters who are going to vote on the override that we're fiscally responsible. The schools need a cut. They're going to have a large cut. This is how we're this is how we're going to be responsible to you. So you know that if you give us a, a large override and it's going to be a large one, we are going to be careful with the money and we're not going to be spending it willy nilly. Now, you know, so they're saying, well, we're going to increase our free cash to show we're also responsible. But, you know, if, if the override doesn't doesn't uh, pass, it doesn't matter, you know, if you have $3 million or $4 million, it's going to be just wiped out uh, if, the, if the override doesn't pass. Yeah, I, I think some people would have concerns, too, that, that um, you know, husbanding all the, res all the potential resources that may still come into the, the town, 
uh, because of um, you know the enormous uh, uh, fiscal uh, um, reserve that's building up for the state that um, um, you know that becomes another excuse not to pass the next override. You, I mean that is exactly what happened when the override just of a couple of years ago. Yeah. What we had is that uh, they uh, everybody's you know who was supporting the override was saying, look, we're gonna we can have a small override now and a small override in a couple of years. Um, and we certainly need it. And, and what you got from a counter, uh, what was that, that? That was countered by people saying, well, look at all the free cash we have. Yeah. So I, I would say this as a member of the school committee, um, as well as a host, um, <laughs> that um, from my perspective, and, and I don't think this is my, my own viewpoint. I think this would be probably a shared opinion among many folks in town, um, uh, parents, um, as well as um, uh, potentially many members of the school committee that, you know, if if the town does receive any ch additional Chapter 70 fu funding that, uh, you know, as in the past has been traditionally the practice, that needs to flow directly to the schools mm -hmm. um, to, to exactly help right. deal with, with some of the current problems and, and developing problems. And that has been a historic fact. I mean, you know, uh, when the money came in, you know, the first people who would get the, get, get, get some portion of it were the schools and it's that's because of the importance the schools hold in this town you know we don't have any industry and people come to this uh, you know as I've, as I've always said you know you don't come to Belmont for the roads you come for the schools and if you show that the schools are being are going through this very harsh austerity budget you know how many people are really going to be coming here you know the, the, the houses are worth like 1.2 million dollars on average maybe they can send their kids to private school, you know, if they have that mon amount of money, but they don't, you know, they're spending a lot of their available funds and savings to buy a house and they're not looking to also have a private school education. All right. And just to give the other side very quickly, you know, um, you know, from the select board and warrant committee situation, the town's fiscal future is indeed worrisome. And, and oh, so, we're not, so the schools are not the only <laughs> issue. That, that, right that, here, that, that's right. And so, so if additional resources flow to the town, um, you know, uh, certainly a case can be made that those resources should be husbanded for, for, for future years. Uh, we, I, you know, I just want to make sure that people understand that that's that's a, a viewpoint that 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 many people feel is valid, and and I I would not dispute that that's a that's a valid viewpoint. Mm -hmm. All right, so Franklin, let's move on to the rink. Are these the last days of the rink? It is over. You know this this fifty year old fifty plus year old rink started off as an outdoor rink, and then they just kind of started putting walls and a roof on it uh, back in the early seventies. Yeah, it's oh, it's uh, these are the last days. We our last uh, regular season uh, hockey games uh, matches are uh, on Saturday at two and four. Girls at two, boys at four. And as the rec department and as the select board has said, they're not going to put a penny more into it. It's just yeah, it, putting the money into this rink is just you know it makes no sense. It's so dilapidated. Yes. You would have to you'd have to put over almost. You know, one hundred sixty thousand, maybe even two hundred sixty thousand dollars, and just just to get it running for next year at the level it is now, it just it makes it, it as the select board has stated when they voted for a debt exclusion vote, they said it's it's just not worth it. It's and so these are the, these are if you're nostalgic. Come to it. You know, my son's <laughs> played 13 years in that rink. And I said, Why are you gonna come over and see the last days? He said, No. And I said, Why not? He said, It was a dump when I was playing in it. <laughs> so I don't care. So um it, it certainly is. It's it's past it's 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 now a danger. You know, the, uh, the architect who's built who who is designing the new rink said he's more worried that the that it's not that the ice won't be made, it's that the roof is gonna fall in. You know, it's just that, you know, it, it couldn't pass. Any kind of building <laughs> certificate, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't get anybody to sign off on this. You know, it's basically it's there because it's grandfathered. So um, yes, yeah, the last days of the rink. We will have one extra game, which will be a boys uh, playoff match because the boys are uh, did really well. They're in ninth place in the power rankings right now. And, so. and when is that going to happen? Probably sometime in um, late February, early March. So you'll have one more time to get to the rink.
That's that's if the weather. That's right. <laughs> if, it's, if it's 70 degrees <laughs> outside, we're yeah, and that is something that actually was talked about. Somebody said uh, from the school, uh, uh, the athletic department, he says, you know, if we can't skate on it, if it's too wet because, you know, everything is melting, we're going to have to go to Watertown or, Ar or Arlington or even like someplace out, in, you know, maybe even as far away as Marlboro. You know, and it's but it's not as far as way as where the uh, girls hockey team is going. You know, they just missed out on holding up. Uh, they I think they they will miss out. They don't have enough leeway to get to the next level so if they ha if they were just one s s selection higher they would would have had a home game but they're at 17th place and it's it's looking like they're going to be traveling to martha's vineyard to play oh my gosh <laughs> i know all right so franklin what else in sports well we have uh, truly one of the best athletes to ever come from belmont and, and she's only 17 so <laughs> that's that's saying something her name is Ellie Shea. Uh, she's a two-time national uh, high school uh, national champion in the 5,000 meters. She's a runner. And uh, she has, uh, well, let's say um, she's going a bit far to get to uh, her next race, which is uh, basically she got on a plane and uh, for 24 hours and 10,000 miles to get to a small town in the middle of the outback in Australia called uh, Bathurst where the world champion cross country meet is holding. And she is going to be running for the, uh, with the under 16 or the, what they call the junior uh, women's um, uh, championship. And she'll be running against the best in the world, uh, Ethiopia, Kenyans. Um, and just, it's, uh, it's, it's, and she'll be wearing the USA vest. So she will be, um, you know, uh, one of the rare people who have come from Belmont to uh, be, uh, to wear uh, USA um, to run for the national team. She's a, uh, She's an exceptional uh, runner. Uh, it is going to be kind of, um, it's, it's kind of a, 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 so far the forecast for that day down in Bathurst is, uh, I think it's like 95 degrees. Oh, with, my God. With, 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 with possibility of, of violent thunderstorms. But it's a race, you know. <laughs> it's, it's nice to think she were, she, she's going uh, a round trip of 20,000 miles to run. Uh, 3.7 miles. All right, so that's a lot of and that's a lot of it, air it, miles. It, 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 I know. <laughs> wow, you you you, be, you can spend that over in a long time. Um, and she'll uh, if you if you're interested, come to the Belmontonian uh, website with the story because we'll have links uh, for possible possibly to see her live. Now Bathurst is 16 hours ahead, and she's uh, running off at uh, her race will be at six. It will be at 4:10 their time, which is exactly which will be midnight here. So midnight Saturday. All right, Franklin. So if you'd like to see more of Franklin's reporting, please check out the Belmontonian.com. That's all for this week. Thank you, Franklin. And we will see you next time.